is an opportunity to use uh, technology to enable uh, better business models um, and better businesses, better user experiences in fintech, in financial services. Um, and I just want to talk about three companies that three stories, three companies that sort of set the scene and, and certainly were foundational in our thinking about this market. One is called Weatherbill. Anyone heard of Weatherbill? Um, yeah, I tried to get Ed and Bert to invest in it and they didn't, but they were busy doing other great things. Ah! I'll do something. Um, you might be a little bit more familiar with Climate Corp. They changed their name to Climate Corporation and uh, uh, I was very privileged to lead the angel round in this company in 2005, 2006, and they sold to Monsanto for just shy of a billion dollars in 2016. But why this is interesting is, at the time, it was just as I was leaving my old job, I was running um, some capital market, markets businesses addressed in Kymar, and they essentially showed up, two ex-Googlers, David Friedberg and Suraj Khalid, who's now a partner at Atomico, um, with something that blew my mind, which was, um, Two guys, literally two guys, and maybe a few more, but in a, garage, in a virtual garage, and built an exotic derivatives origination pricing and settlement platform. Uh, they happened to do weather derivatives, but the architecture was exotic derivatives. And they had done this, uh, like the demo on, on a shoestring, and even with the Angel Series A money, they'd done they did millions of dollars. But I knew my bank and other banks had taken literally hundreds of millions of dollars to build. And so, you know, not only did I think this was super interesting, but it really catalyzed that, you know, my thinking around there is something that is happening and is going to happen going forward. Um, technology is going to enable um, fantastic fundamental transformation in business models and economics and financial services. Ah, okay. Second company I want to mention briefly is Simple. Has anyone heard of Simple? They used to be called Bank Simple. Um, again, one of our earliest investments at, at Anthemis, uh, I met the founder, he was a quant at a hedge fund in my old life, and so we've known each other for a few years, and I remember vividly sitting in Columbus Circle in New York on a park bench, um, talking about his idea to build a bank that didn't suck. And the, the, it's, it's a horrible story, but it's a real story. He had an account at Chase, you know, pick on Chase, the big US bank, and I uh, was finding that the new terms and conditions kept getting you know, smaller and smaller and they were down to half, uh, 0.5 font size and, uh, and thousands of words and user experience was just awful. So again, this is a company going back to, in the, sort of the days of Tim O'Reilly's Web 2.0 user experience around retail banking. Um, they subsequently were bought by BBVA Compass and are still operating and part of the BBVA family. Um, but they are the ship that launched uh, a thousand other ships. Now there are literally hundreds of what are called meta banks and challenger banks around the world and, and Simple I think was an inspiration for a lot of them. Um, the last company I want to just mention briefly is a company that I think may be the single most successful startup in UK history, at least recent history. Has anyone heard of the market? Uh, that's more, usually when they talk, nobody's ever heard of the market. It's now IHS market. Uh, I checked there earlier today, it has a, almost an $18 billion market cap. Uh, it started in 2003 in London. Uh, no venture capital investors, uh, no angel investors, and actually a consortium of banks. I was very fortunate to be one of those investors and sat on the board for the first few years. Um, and again, uh, was, was a foundational in my thinking about how uh, using technology to modernize a business. Um, their competitors are people like Bloomberg and Thomson Reuters, and in the space of 10, 12 years, they are now an incumbent. So, you know, that was, again, it can be done. Uh, they went from nothing to being, uh, you know, now I think the risk that Lance has is being seen as, you know, an incumbent and everything that sort of goes with that. Just briefly, two numbers 56. What's significant about this? Nothing really, but as I was preparing for this, I dug around in my inbox in my Google Drive and I found a spreadsheet from 2008 um, when I started uh, creating Anthemis. Um, I put together a spreadsheet, literally an Excel spreadsheet that had actually it was a number spreadsheet that had a list of all the startups I knew of in Western Europe and, uh, and North America that were doing financial services. And 
you know, one version of it, the, the, the last one I could sort of find from that era, had 56 companies in it. Now, I'm not suggesting it was completely canonical, that there were, you know, it was every single start level, but it was pretty close. I mean, that's what I was doing at that time, full time, um, you know, to illustrate that there, there really, this, this market sort of came from nothing. And then also, at the same time yesterday, I checked on, on Crunchbase, and you can use CD Insights or Pitchbook, hey, all these data sources exist now that didn't then. Um, and I used the FinTech and Financial Services tab. So again, I'm not, you know, there might be some noise in this number, there might be some incumbents and all that sort of, but I think directionally, 12,000 plus um, FinTech or Financial Services startups indexed in the Crunchbase database in 10 years. Um, so the world has changed fundamentally. And that creates opportunities, but it also creates risks. So to talk about you know, where we see the future, um, subject of a complete other talk, but our, our sort of foundational thesis is that we're moving from an industrial age, our economies and our societies, the last about 200 years since the Industrial Revolution until late in the 20th century, beginning of this century, and now moving into an information age, society and economy. And all the industries that we have, all the things that we need as humans and societies, are transitioning their business models to that. Um, as a follow-on to that, uh, we believe one of the effects is, is that the optimal types of businesses and corporate structures, organizational structures, are going to, this is a vast oversimplification, migrate from you know, tailoring and top-down, vertically integrated businesses to networks and ecosystems of businesses. And you know, we're already starting to see that. That was very much theory 10 years ago, now we're starting to see that. And the, the rise of APIs, not just in finance, but everywhere, I think is just one ma fairly concrete manifestation of that. Um, that throws up lots of opportunities, so we're very excited. One of the questions we get asked most often from our investors and our LPs is, okay, you guys had a great run, and the fintech industry had a great run, but you know, congratulations on being early, but you know, it's done, it's over. There's 12,000 companies, there's nothing to do. Um, we absolutely don't think that's the case. It's different than when there was 50 companies, um, but the opportunities are still vast. Um, finance is one of the largest industries in the world. If you take a made-up Gartner or McKinsey-type number, it's five trillion, trillion dollars of, of revenues a year. Uh, but more importantly, and certainly for us and our mission, is that finance is the nervous system of our society. Um, and if it doesn't work well, um, that shows in all aspects of society. And actually, Working well is one thing, but it actually, we believe, should be invisible. It needs to go back to being a little bit like the nervous system is, but very present. So it's important that it work properly. And we think, you know, as it transitions, it's, it, it will again work properly in the years to come. Um, technology is a big driver, um, obviously, uh, but also maybe a little bit more controversially or, or less obviously, we actually think regulation is, a, is an opportunity in this space. And um, I gave a talk, I think uh, about four or five years ago at the first Wired Money Conference uh, where I sort of put forward the idea of, of creating regular <coughs> sandboxes and, and having a, a, an iterative, uh, learn fast approach to regulation in a very constrained context. And I'm you know, really excited to say that the UK is at the vanguard of this with the FCA and their sandbox, but, but it's not only the UK, pretty much regulator after regulator across the world is taking this approach. And I think, at, you know, Without, regulation is fundamentally necessary, in my opinion, in finance, um, but it creates, a, it, it's actually, in the longer term, in the short term, it can be a barrier, it can be a, a pain in the ass for a startup, um, but when you're building from a green field, um, with the technologies and the business models we have today, um, it becomes much, much easier if you start with this to embed it into your business models, and then it can, can become a competitive mode. Um, and then the last thing that's really positive, we think, going forward is behavioral change. Um, this is not just unique to finance, but I think it's particularly acute in finance because finance is important to people, you know. Uh, it's not surprising that the first big wins in the internet <coughs> world were, were things like Amazon selling books. Um, uh, I think it was, you know, less of a leap to go, okay, I'll buy a book online instead of going to, uh, uh, to W.H. Smith. Um, I'm not sure I want to put my pensions online or my investments. Clearly, 20 years later, that's all changing. I remember once um, in the early 90s, somebody said to me, no one will ever buy a car online. Uh, now most people buy cars online. Uh, 
Uh, same thing in finance. Uh, it's now being adopted. It's not just the millennials or Gen Y. Um, it's our whole society is getting used to this. So again, it creates an opportunity for companies and businesses that are native to this environment and not trying to put lipstick on a pig in terms of their business model. Um, but there's lots of, there are some challenges. One is competition, 12,000 companies, and then all the incumbents waiting to do things in different ways. Um, so it's a very competitive uh, environment. Uh, the reverse of behavior is there still is finance is subject both from a regulatory and behavioral point of view to inertia. And so that can be hard to overcome. And I think, you know, one of the things that VCs, good VCs often say is timing is important. You can be too early. Uh, actually, that's one of the biggest risks when you're building a business as a founder or investing in one as a VC is being too early. Um, and I think in finance, that's particularly acute. So it's something that we focus on a lot is, is this the right time? and or capitalize the business sufficiently so that it can play out. Um, and um, then the last, the last thing which I'll just touch on into the subject all to itself is um, cybercrime, right? So, you know, that in, in one sense it's new, but it's as old as, uh, as finance.